Welcome back everyone. So this part of the build can be kind of confusing and arguably the most overwhelming part of the build with hundreds of different options and literally thousands of combinations of these options. Where do you even start, right? Well, where I come from, there's an old saying, how do you eat a 96 ounce steak? One bite at a time. So in this segment, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few basic components and kind of talk about the benefits and the choices of the common choices that are made uh, when building these boxes. So step one in the journey, in my mind, is finding a good support group that can help you along the way, like a Facebook group such as the Built Not Bought Boombox group or any other sites that cater to DIY, boom boxes, stereos, things like that. People who have like-minded uh, and the same passion as you do for building these boxes. And you'll find that a vast majority of them enjoy helping other people, sharing their knowledge and their experience just like I am today. Second is do your own research. So when you think you decided on a component, do a little research on it, find out more information about it, see if there's common issues with it, if it's a common uh, component that people are using on a regular basis with no issues. Uh, chat rooms, Google, YouTube videos, things like that. Those are all great places to start. So where do we start? Well, all electrical circuits start at the power source, so we'll start with the battery. Let's take a little closer look at some of our options. So the choice of battery is made by what you already have available, decided on by the voltage capabilities of the amplifier, or determined by the choice of the build and requirements of those components. And I'll explain that a little more in the amp section later on. But let's take a look at some of the most popular battery choices. So first there is the drill battery. This one is very popular because most people who have cordless drills have spare batteries. And another benefit is that when the battery dies during playing, you just pick up a battery, swap it out, keep right on going. You don't have to wait for a recharge. There are several different options online that you can purchase the battery adapters for almost every single battery company that there is. When using the drill batteries, most brands are going to require a low voltage cutoff. And what this piece does is prevents the battery from being discharged so far down that the charger will no longer turn on and recharge the battery. Not all brands take them, so this is where research is going to do you some good. You can go online to the chat rooms, do some research, you can find out whether or not you are going to need it, how it's set up and wired, and what voltage you need to set the low voltage cutoff to. The second option is an internal lithium style battery or a rechargeable battery pack. These will vary anywhere from 12 to 40 volts in most cases and again the battery you choose, the size that you choose, is going to be determined by the amplifier. The final option is the automotive style 12 volt lithium batteries or LiPo batteries. These are typically for larger builds where very loud is desired and they're paired with car audio components. With any of these battery types, doesn't matter which ones, amp hour rating is going to essentially equate to runtime. So the larger the battery, the longer the runtime. Now there are a lot of variables that affect playtime, but typically the rule is the more amp hour the battery is, the longer the battery will last. For example, a 5 amp hour battery such as this one typically will last twice as long as a 2.5 amp hour battery here. Okay, so let's talk amplifiers. As you can see, there are many, many options on amplifiers as well. And choosing an amplifier, well, it's going to be determined by your desired sound quality and loudness how many speakers you're going to have, how much bass you want, and so forth and so on. This is where you're going to want to do some research, right? You have multiple different options. You have single channel amplifiers. 
you have dual channel with adjustments bass and treble at 100 watts per channel you have dual channel with bass and treble at 160 watts you have three channel with a subwoofer you also have extended potentiometer for different types of builds so as you can see there's multiple multiple options this is where you're going to want to find out how much do I really want out of this speaker when choosing your amplifier the watt rating is what you're going to focus on so typically the more wattage output the louder your system is going to be typically not necessarily hundred percent but that's what it should be so a, a a smaller 50 watt per channel versus the 160 watt per channel well the 160 watt per channel is going to be a louder build so let's look at some of our amplifier options there are several so let's focus on just a couple of the most common that are used and what to look for when you're choosing that amplifier so we're going to go ahead and start we'll start with the 1001 B so this is a single channel mono amplifier it's typically used for smaller builds with a single speaker that mono will allow you to have both left and right channel sound in a single speaker so an additional benefit to this particular amplifier the 1001B is the TWS option so what it does is it allows you to pair this particular amplifier with one other 1000B amplifier so that you can build two separate boxes with a single speaker and it's going to give you left and right sound that you could put at the end of a room or outside across the yard and have stereo effect almost like a concert the second amplifier that we're going to look at is going to be the 1002 T so this one is probably the most popular it's a hundred watt per channel two channel it has bass and treble adjustments there are some new ones on the market that have external antennas so you can get a longer Bluetooth very very popular build even though this is a two channel amplifier it can be used on a single speaker setup you would just sum the two sides together left and right not all of the manufacturers that sell the 1002 T can do that they're not all capable of summing together you will know immediately if it can't because it will have all kinds of weird noise it'll just sound like crap and, and won't perform like it's supposed to so stick to the major brands the Dejungo brand and the Woozy brand on those for that most all of these chip amps have a variable voltage input and that voltage amount equates to the amount of wattage output so what that means is if this particular amplifier is from 9 volts to 24 volts then at 9 volts it's probably only putting out 10 to 15 watts of power and at 24 volts this one advertised will do 100 watts per channel nobody really believes the advertising I have not personally seen anybody prove that it puts out hundred watts per channel but I can tell you that if you want the most that it will do out of its capabilities you need to give this amplifier or anyone that you choose its maximum voltage input so on this one if it's 36 volts then then you should have 36 volts if you want to get the peak performance out of that amplifier so here's where again the research is going to do you some good finding voltages of batteries to match the amplifier but also knowing what the full charge rate of the batteries are in some cases the batteries if it says it's a 24 volt battery will actually charge up to 29 volts which is too much for the amplifier to handle so going to the support groups asking questions about that doing a little research finding out if you have a battery that you have chosen that is going to overcharge and cause you issues what it'll do is it'll either cut out sound or it will just won't come on at all well that's where this little piece right here comes into play that is a buck converter we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail about that but I will tell you this the buck converters job is to basically monitor 
and maintain a specified voltage output no matter what the input voltage is coming in. So in other words, if this is 36 volts and you're using a 40 volt battery, you would set this to a 40 volt input and 36 volt output and it would only give this amplifier what it can handle, not over voltage and cause problems. So when choosing your components, always refer to the off charge or the full charge voltage of the battery and the amplifier input voltages when you're choosing them. So the last amplifier option that we're going to discuss is the 12 volt automotive style amp like this one featured right here. Those will go up to four channel amps, multiple speakers, higher power, requiring the 12 volt automotive batteries at a higher amp hour rate. Um, not your typical first build, but in some cases it is. Some people are go big, go home. Uh, but that's what you would use those for is the bigger, more powerful builds with multiple speakers. All right, everyone. I hope that helps answer some questions, probably creates a whole lot more for you, and I completely understand. But remember, rely on your Facebook groups and your support groups, um, internet knowledge, things like that. Do some research. You'll probably find exactly what it is you're looking for, I'm sure. And if not, well, you can do like me. You can put it over to the side, order something different, and try that too. Thanks for showing up, guys. I certainly appreciate it. If you like what you saw today, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe the channel. And I appreciate it. And as always, build on, my friends.